Are you tired of shirtless sweaty fucks just pushing you off while you're trying to pass their guard noogie? Well, this is the video for you because today I'm going over the body lock from headquarters and how you can use it to abuse these motherfuckers. I didn't mean to say that. First, let's talk about entering headquarters. Let's assume that my opponent is doing what he's supposed to do and he is spinning his legs like a spastic fuck because he doesn't have any attachments and he doesn't want you to just grab his shin. If he's not doing this, I would literally just reach down and grab both of his shins and I would instep his kneecap. Because he's spinning his legs, I have to stick my arms down and kind of make a block, okay, like sticking a stick into a fan to prevent him from doing the spaz. Now I can instep into his kneecap really deep with my shin. I almost kind of want to load his knee up towards his head. Whether my opponent grabs my ankle or not makes no difference. I'm going to take my knee and I'm going to dive it into the pocket of his hip. And I'm going to make sure as I come down that my weight is situated in the middle of my hips. I don't want to lean too far to the right because he might be able to lift me with the butterfly hook. And I don't want to lean too far to the left because then I will not have enough pressure to keep his leg pinned. If they're playing reverse de la Hiva side, I switch my legs so that way my outside leg is now on the inside of his knee and I just play headquarters on that side. It is very difficult to force people's hips from one side to the other in nogi, so I don't bother trying. I just become ambidextrous and I play headquarters on both sides. If they're playing double butterfly, I will take my foot and I will windshield wiper over their butterfly hook to the inside and I will drop my knee down over the top and I will pin them into headquarters that way. This will take a little bit of balance because I'm going to be falling down, but that's okay. So now that I'm down in headquarters, let's talk about holding it a little bit because this is where people really struggle. They get pushed off right away. They're not really sure how to pressure. They don't know if they want to play this as a float position or if they want to play it as a pressure position. I'm here to set the record straight. This should be a pressure position and floating should be your secondary option. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right knee and I'm going to push it into the pocket of his hip. Okay, I'm going to be pinching my knees together through his body. My left knee will either be over around the outside of his leg pinching together or it'll be underneath his hip pinching together. My right foot is going to be rotating out into his calf. I would prefer to get underneath it so I can have more connection and more ability to kind of pull my hips down if he tries to lift me up or he tries to push me away. So to facilitate this, I'm going to reach back Subscribe. and I'm going to just pull up on his foot for one second and get my foot underneath it. Now I should be able to keep this pressure very easily. If you can't keep this pressure, you can't get under his leg, it's no big deal. Just put as much outward pressure as you possibly can in order to maintain as much friction as possible. My right hand should be dedicated to either knocking Bird's hands off me, digging an underhook on the bottom side, controlling his kneecap, or it should be there to pull his knee back underneath my leg anytime Bird starts to free his leg. To do this, I'm just going to make a C cup, I'm going to catch his knee, and I'm just going to shove it as far under me as it'll go. Now, anytime they put their hands on you while you're in headquarters, I want you to either deflect their hands up and off of you by rolling your shoulders and popping his hands up, or I want you to pummel the top side, not the bottom side. The top side is the safer side because if I get the top side underhook, it lets me go over the top on knee slices. It lets me pressure much more safely because I'm not compromising my bottom side post, which is the direction he would lift me off if I manage to let him lift me, which you shouldn't. I want my solar plexus right in the middle of his kneecap where the groove of his knee is actually in that little notch in your solar plexus. This way, when he pushes me away, I can feel the slight angle that he's pushing me at and I can deflect his knee towards that side. I can use deflection movements with my chest to make this easier and I can take my left or right hand and I can push or pull the knee at the same time in order to get it to the outside or the inside. Now my overall goal is to get to the inside and to make this easier, if Bird is not pushing back into me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push his knee towards his head and I'm going to try to get close enough that I can actually grab the back of his head and pull myself in. Because the closer you can get his knee towards his chest, the easier it is to deflect his knee to the inside or the outside. So the more pressure I can add, the easier this whole sequence is going to be. Once I do manage to slip to the inside of his knee, the first thing I want to do is drop down chest to chest as fast as I can. You should be like a brick and you should give no fucks about your opponent's well-being at this point in time. You drop, you eliminate the space, you get your pass. Now. After I get chest to chest, I want to make sure that my hips really load up into that butterfly hook and I keep Bird from over pushing me away. 
if Bird is pushing on the knee that is pinning his leg, I will take my right hand and I will just uh, dig an underhook on that or I will just pop it off. It's not a big deal. It's very difficult for him to push you off from here. My left arm should be close to Bird's body, preferably somewhere up near an underhook. Even though it's not a big deal if Bird digs an underhook on me, I can body lock him either way. And now once I've secured the position, we can start thinking about setting up our body lock and then finishing our pass. To secure the body lock, at this point, all I'm going to do is I'm going to reach for Bird's head with my right arm. I'm going to cup the back of his neck, and I'm going to position my left hand on the mat. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push me and Bird up into the air as a unit, not disconnected. I don't want to push myself up and then pull Bird up to me. That's giving him space to work with. I want to push us up together. I'm going to use that space I just created to take my left arm, and I'm going to dive it down underneath Bird's body, and I'm going to position it as low down on his body as I can go for my body lock. My goal is to get my arm as deep across and as low down as I can. Now, at this point, if Bird decides to push me away with everything he has because he's panicking, rightfully so, I'm going to connect my hands together in a gable grip and I'm just going to hunker down. To finish the body lock pass, you actually don't usually need to lock your hands together from this position. You have so much pressure with one arm that I can use my other hand to post by his head and straighten his spine out instead. This makes finishing the pass a lot easier no matter what option I'm going to go for. Now we've done all the prep work we really need to do to finish this pass. Now my goal is to get my left knee to the inside of Bird's legs. Now I've got two major ways to do this. One, I'm going to pressure my hip into Bird's foot at a downward angle with so much inward and consistent pressure that his foot will slip off. He doesn't have anywhere to go because I have him pinned to the mat and there's only so much weight he can actually take on that foot before it comes off and I'm able to get my leg to the inside. Now the other method is to take my left foot and windshield wiper it on top of Bird's top leg and then flick it to the outside and get my leg to the inside of his legs. Once I have my leg on the inside of his legs, I'm going to take a big step out to the left and I'm going to use my foot to walk up and I'm going to shelf his legs so that way he cannot close half guard on me. Now I'm going to take my time at this point because there's not much Bird can do and I'm going to windshield wiper that left leg all the way to the top of Bird's bottom thigh. Once I've completed this windshield wiper, there isn't anything Bird can really do to secure this position anymore. He's over. I will leave my leg pinned in there for a second because what I really want him to do is actually catch my kneecap itself because that prevents him from trying to shrimp, bridge, wrestle up, turn into me, or do anything beneficial for him whatsoever. And I'm going to really get my body lock tight. I'm going to reach up and club his head. Then I'm going to finish my pass into side control. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below letting us know how you like the instructional. Remember, we got a Patreon account. You guys can feel free to hop into that. We got a lot of perks for you guys in there. We do a lot of video reviews and we interact with the community. We've got a Discord channel and this outro is already too fucking long. So you guys eat your Panda Express and have a good day.